Hey, Tony. Hello. I think I've heard of you on TikTok. Are you a preacher? Uh, yes. I'm not a pastor, but I preach the gospel. You preach in like in front of real people or only on social media? In front of people and on social media. Okay. Do you live in Tennessee? California. Oh. I was going to see if you wanted to meet in person and do a debate. Um, yeah, I'm not really a debater. I'm not really it'll, interested. It'll be a civil, like, I'm not talking about, like, you know, people on TikTok, they think a debate is I just talk over you, mute you, and kick you off. I'm talking about a civil, organized debate where you have a lot of time, I have a lot of time. We go back and forth answering questions, and we use the Bible. That's what I'm talking about. You know, like the old-fashioned debates. Yeah, well, uh, I'm just here to, you know, respond to what you're talking about here. Yeah, that's, that's good. Do you have your Bible? Of course, yeah. What translation do you prefer? King James. Okay. So, let's think of it this way. King James is the inspired word of God, right? That's right. And what we believe in practice, we must have the authority from the Bible, and that authority comes by command, example, and inference. Would you agree? Say that again. I said the 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 uh, from what we practice, teach, believe, and obey needs to come from the scriptures, and that authority comes from command example and inference right did you say the man example and inference no no i said command the command like a command like the authority comes from command yeah all authority example. all authority comes from scripture let god be true but every man a liar right but how we how we determine that like if we get a command or if we have an example like the first century Christians did something that's that's like an example and we should follow that or inference like some things are implied they may not necessarily uh, be stated in that place but they're implied in other places yeah I don't care what man did and I only care about what the Bible says right all right but what I'm what I'm getting at is if if we don't establish, because it sounds like you do study, but if we don't establish how we get authority, you know what I mean by authority? Like, like, uh, for example, your name is Tony the Baptist, right? It's Tony, yeah. I thought it said Tony the Baptist. It says Tony the Baptist, but yeah, my name's Tony. Okay. So, like I, I don't go around saying that I'm a Baptist or I'm a Methodist. I just say I'm a Christian. Okay. Okay. So I see that in uh, Acts 11 that they were first called Christians. So that's that's to me that looks like that's what I want to be called. I don't want to be called no would you, denomination. Would you agree that John was called the Baptist? Uh, John was really the John the Immerser. So, but. Can, that wasn't uh, scripture where it says John the Immerser, because my Bible says John the Baptist. Well, do you, you don't use any kind of Greek, do you? No, I use the King James. I, you asked me already what Bible I use. I said the King James. So, you, I don't. But I'm Greek. saying so, like you don't believe that the King James was a translation from the Koine Greek. Yeah, it's a translation from the Textus Receptus. Okay, but when you go all the way back, as far as the, uh, when you get to the, try to get to the closest, it was the uh, Greek manuscripts, right? What do you think was the closest? What Greek manuscript? Well, I think you had like two main ones. Uh, you had the Alexandrian and the Byzantine, I guess, and then there's many that branch off of those two. Is that yeah, so the majority text comes from over 5,000 manuscripts, which are, um, you know, this Byzantine text type, uh, like the Brilliant Alice, Washingtonius 400, the Guilford Vitanius, Minuscule 1424. Um, those are examples of the Byzantine text type. And then you have the Alexandrian text type, 
which is the which is also known as the modern critical text like the Codex Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, and the Alexandrius that you mentioned. Um, these are two completely different text text types. As you mentioned earlier, we were first called Christians in Antioch. This is the Byzantine area. This is why the majority of all Greek texts come from the Byzantine area. And that's why, so when people go to the Alexandria, Sinaiticus, or Vaticanus, they're actually going to the uh, Alexandrian text type, which is in Egypt. So, so the Byzantine, like you said, if it was in Greek and it's translated, do you ever go to look at the original Greek words? No, I have God's word in the King James Bible. I don't speak Greek. I already told you that. Okay. Do you, I just know the history of my manuscript. Do you have to, do you have to in a, with our technology, do you have to speak Greek to click on a Greek word and it gives you the Greek lexicon definition of it? Yeah, the lexicon's an error when it does that because a Greek word can have multiple different uh, meanings. It depends on the context, sentence structure, etc. So you have to be actually know the Greek language in order to be able to translate properly into the context of scripture. I don't know Greek. I have brothers that know Greek. If you, you know, I could send one your way that actually speaks Greek if you want to have the conversation with them in a Greek in the Greek language. No, it's fine. I'm not saying you have to know Greek. I'm just saying that to be a, a, a good student, you can actually look into these Greek words and you don't necessarily have to be able to read Greek because with our technology, you can have like a King James Strong's and it just tells you what that word is. And it does give you some definitions, some definitions, uh, of course, uh, you and I may not agree with. But when you look up like the word baptize, what does that mean? Yeah, it's to immerse. Okay, and, and John the Baptist, what was he doing? What was he known for? Baptizing people of the baptism of repentance. It tells you in uh, Acts chapter 19, verse 1 through 4, exactly what John the Baptist was doing. Specifically in verse 4, it says, uh, let me just flip there real quick, make sure I quote it correctly. In Acts 19, 4, it says, Then Paul... Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. Right. Okay. And so John's baptism in Acts chapter 19, would you agree, is a baptism that we don't practice today? Baptizing people with the baptism of repentance? Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Okay. What about Mark 1, 4? Oh, this also describes John's baptism. It says, John baptized in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Yeah. So my point is, John baptized for the remission of sins. Yeah. I think, so if he, I think you uh, might be misunderstanding that. If you, know, cause if you compare that with Acts 19, 4, it's telling you that John baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. So when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that is how you get remission of sins. So Mark 1, 4, you said, I misunderstood Mark 1, 4, and all I did was read it. Then you, then you read Acts 19, and then you said, well, yeah. What do you think it means to baptize for remission of sins? Well, hang on. We're not, no reason that, to, to go off because you made a statement that the Bible doesn't say right there. And people on TikTok actually think that's what it says, and it doesn't say that, Tony. That's exactly what it says. Where? Do you, let me ask you something. <laughs> you said that's exactly what it says. All you got to do is show me where it says it, and then we'll go on to the next discussion. I you did. Can't I, say Acts 19.4. Okay, let's, let's turn over and read it. I did read. And you said Acts nineteen four says all you got to do is believe only. No, it doesn't say that right there. It's saying well, believing on Jesus only is what gives you remission of sins. And I, and that's what I'm asking. Him. You said that was like an Acts nineteen, but it doesn't say that in Acts nineteen. Yeah, John three sixteen says it. 
Okay, so now you went to another Bible verse, but you will admit John Acts 19 verse 4 doesn't say anything about believing on Jesus and you'll be saved. Yeah, well, that, well, that's the whole point of Acts 19 for John's baptism is John was pointing people to Jesus that they would that so that they would believe on him. OK, so when you when you read believe, what is your view of believing? Is that just a mental ascent uh, like John three sixteen? Is that referring to disobedience or obedience? Will you? Will you use your King James Bible and uh, explain to me what believing is? Sure. If you look at Acts, so the, the, the questions asked by Paul and Silas, or the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16, verse 30 and 31, brought the nonsense for what must they be saved. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spoke unto him, uh, the word of the Lord into all that were in his house. And if you look at First Peter one twenty five, it tells you exactly wait, 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 what the word wait, of the Lord wait, is wait, in the wait, gospel. Wait. Hey, Tony. Did you do you remember what I asked you? I said, can you give me a definition or explain what believing is? And all you did was went to a Bible verse that says believe. But yeah. I don't Trusting. Are you talking about a mental ascent? Are you talking about trusting? trusting? Are you talking yeah, about trust. obedience? Trusting that Christ died, buried, and rose again to pay for your sins. Okay, so so you only have to believe in what Jesus did, but you don't have to do anything else. Yeah, Ephesians 29 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is okay, the gift hey, of God, hey, not of works, as any man should boast. Hey, let, let's, let's discuss one scripture at a time. Okay, but see, see what I do is... I'm responding to your questions with scripture. Okay. But see, I can quote a bunch of scriptures that show baptism is required, but that's not going to really get anywhere because... Well, hold on. If, what if saves taking, us? Do you believe that baptism is part of the gospel? No, hang on. So if you... If you, you notice how you're not answering any of my questions? You only want me to answer yours? I will. But so you gotta, so debate, uh, in, in Tony, a, in any type Tony. of debate forum, it would go both ways. Okay. So I think you're afraid to answer that question. Is baptism part of the gospel? Yes. Okay, Tony. But listen. So it's not, though. I can show you that it's not part of the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. The guy that was up here before hey, me, Tony, he showed you Tony, in 1 Corinthians. Tony. See, will you look, listen? See, see how you're not letting me speak? Because you're, you're making afraid. false claims. And let's go back and look at this first one. So go back to Acts 16. Okay, I feel like you're running from this. I'm run I'm the one trying to get you to stay in the text, man. Well, hold on. You said that baptism. You said that baptism is part of the gospel. In First Corinthians, you wanted me to answer the question, but we're going to go back to Acts 16. Not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, showing the distinction between the. Oh, gospel hey. And hey, so you got your Bible at Acts 16? <laughs> yes. Did did uh did they preach the gospel to the Philippian jailer? Yes. Okay. Now why did you now see my King James Bible goes a little bit further than yours? How come you cut it short? Are you trying to hide something? What do you mean? Am I trying to hide something? Oh, don't play dumb. It, you you've read your New Testament. You know right there in Acts sixteen thirty and thirty one and thirty two. The text keeps going. Are you trying to hide something well, from these people? Of course the text keeps going. There's more Bible, of course. Okay. Well, why did you skip verse 33? I didn't read to 33. I read from 30 to 32. That's what I'm saying. You skipped I didn't read it. 33. You I didn't skip any. Skipping would be reading two, two verses, skipping a verse, and then reading the next verse. I didn't okay. skip anything. All right. All right. So you, you got me there. You, got, you must play own a lot. So that is a skip. So why did you stop? At verse 32 to get the point across that it's believing the gospel that saves why why is that because you're a Baptist or was you a, was you afraid of verse 33 no because that's what the Bible says in verse 33 it says and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and he was baptized he and all his straight away so was he baptized of course so you said he preached the gospel, and in the gospel he baptized him. So it's in the gospel, then, no, right? He got baptized. He got baptized after he believed the gospel. Okay. So when was he saved? 
when he believed the gospel. So what what verse is that is what I'm asking? In Acts 30 and 31, just those two verses right there, it says, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they so, spake on him the word of the Lord. What's the word of the Lord? The gospel. Yeah. And let me ask you this. When did he rejoice? Before or after baptism? I'm sure that he rejoiced before and after. I don't know. Yeah, well, that's because you didn't read verse 34. If you read 34, Tony, you know it was after he was baptized. Yeah, well, he believed on the Lord. Everybody rejoices after they get baptized. Like, who doesn't rejoice after they get baptized or after they get saved? Why didn't he rejoice before his baptism if he was saved before his baptism? You don't know that. It was all done in the same hour. He was rejoicing. What does that it's have to do with salvation? Before. He brought them into the house, and he set meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. Amen. Because so he believed shows, in God, yeah. It wasn't because he got baptized. It shows believing included baptism. No, it doesn't at all. You're reading that into the text. Where does it say that believing is including baptism? He got it's baptized it's after he believed. No, it said... Believing is in verse 34, and in verse 33, he was baptized. Yeah, so it, it clearly says, so what must I do this. to be saved? And it says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't say anything about being baptized. If you keep reading, baptism's in there. No, it just mentions that he got baptized the same hour. So it baptism isn't that, in your King James. You said, no, it's not in there. So baptism isn't in there. No, baptized is in there, but the only requirement for salvation was to believe. That's what's in there. Is that what it says? It says the only requirement is to believe only. Exactly. Verse 31. It said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in the house. That's it. So, Here so, he, actually, so he, he was saved before he actually heard the gospel. No, he was saved after he heard the gospel. No, you said 31. So now you're going back on 32. Which verse was it that you want to? See, I want to include the whole context. You that's just want to check. No, that's why I read from verse 30 to 32. And then you're the one that said, well, why do you skip verse 33, which is not a skip. I just didn't read down that far. I was just talking about his salvation. I wasn't getting into what he did after he was saved. Well, what about his salvation was actually included baptism? Do you know why? No, because you can look in Acts chapter 8 and you can see that the eunuch had to believe first before he met the prerequisite to get baptized. Well, sure, you have to have believed. That doesn't mean you're saved because you have to be washed in the blood of Jesus. And that happens when Paul was told to arise and be baptized and wash away his sins. So oh, hold on. Paul you said the blood, the blood of Jesus. And amen, I agree with that. But then you're saying that you got to get baptized, be washed with water. So is I'm water the blood that. of Christ? I'm not saying that. The Bible is saying that. Is water the blood of Christ? And show it's me where it says that. Hey, is believing the blood of Christ? Yeah, when you believe his shed blood gives you remission of sins. Well, so believing is the blood? Yeah, when you believe the blood of Christ, what he did for us on the cross through his death and resurrection is what washes away sins, not water. No, you think my actual belief in my mind is the blood of Jesus. I don't know what you believe in your mind. I, I mean, you think getting water baptized saves you. You think water washes away your sins. I'm saying the blood of Christ washes away sins. Let me see how close you are to this account. Do you know what time it was in Acts 16? What do you mean, what time it was? What, what time of the day it was or time of the night? I don't know. I'd have to go back and I'd have to read it. I know that he got baptized that same hour. I don't know what time of the yeah. day it was. Off the top. It says it, it, it says it was at midnight. Right. What you being a Baptist, would you, would you baptize anyone at midnight? Would I baptize anyone at midnight? Yeah. It's typically done during the day. I don't see why you couldn't baptize someone at midnight. There's no rule against it. No, I'm asking, would you? Would you get up in the middle of the night at 1 o'clock in the morning and baptize someone after an earthquake? Sure. I don't see why not. Okay, well, that's kind of shocking. So you would do that even though it's not required for salvation. Yeah, well, it's not required for salvation, but it is a commandment by God. We do it because it's the like figure of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. We're outwardly showing what we inwardly believe. Where do you get that at? In First Peter.
It's the life figure of baptism that saves us, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. So the baptism does now save us, is what you quoted. No, it said the like figure. It says in Romans, or, I'm sorry, First Peter chapter 3, verse 21, it says the like figure whereunto even baptism does now also save us. What is the like figure of baptism? It's the gospel, right? No. It says the like no, figure of no. the gospel. No, it, it doesn't it literally say that. says by the resurrection of Jesus, it says the life go figure. Back to, go back to there and read verse 20. Verse 20 tells you what the light figure is. Yeah, so verse 20 is talking about people getting saved during the, uh, the people that were disobedient during the days of Noah. And, and it says eight souls were saved by what? Water, yeah, they were saved by, what do you, what do you think that that means? Eight souls were saved by water. The water was the destruction. The water, the destruction, the eight souls is Adam, or I, I'm sorry, it's Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their three wives. That's the eight souls that were saved by water. They were on the ark. The water was a symbol of destruction. Where do you see that the water was a symbol of destruction? Have you ever read Genesis when the earth was flooded? No, I'm sitting here looking at verse 20, have, reading, listening to your own private interpretation. It's not a private interpretation. Were the eight souls, were the eight, they were saved by water, as in from the destruction of the water, of the flood. It's talking about yeah, Noah. I, I agree. It says the, the eight souls were saved by water. Who are the eight souls that it's mentioned there? Who are the eight souls? It's Noah and his family. Exactly. But what's that got to do with Was the water yeah, destruction? So by what were they from saying? are used interchangeably all throughout scripture by and from is used interchangeably we were so, saying, so we agree with this we agree with this tony in verse 20 it says eight souls were saved by water do you agree no in verse 20 it says which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of god waited in the days of noah while the ark was preparing wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water as in they were saved from the destruction of the flood Were they saved by water? Yeah, they were saved by water, as in they were saved from the water. No, they weren't saved from the water. The ark carried them up to safety, and the water separated the sinful world from them. Oh, my goodness. You, you, don't, you, you don't understand that the water was the destruction. Yeah, I understand on, on the... Uh, the evil people or the the uh, wicked people of that time, the water yes. washed away the sinful people. Exactly, the water this it was destruction. It's what wiped out the world. But it saved Noah and his family. The ark saved his family. And do you think the ark would have saved his family without water? What? Do you think if if there was no water? He just built the ark. Would it have saved him? No. I, there was a flood coming. No, it was. Have you read Genesis? I'm just trying to get your understanding because you, you're saying that the water had nothing to do with our salvation. And then you're going back. It didn't have anything to do with our salvation. The water was the destruction. That the the water was the flood. The flood wiped out all of mankind except Noah and his family. So your King James says eight souls were saved from water. No, my King James says eight souls were saved by water. By and from are used interchangeably. When it says by, it's as in they, they were saved by the water, by, you know, like from the water. So by and from means the same word. Yes. Okay, well, it says eight souls were saved by. It's, it's, like, four, it's like four and because meaning the same thing. No, it doesn't mean. See, that's 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 the problem with you not being able to go to the Greek and look at certain words. No, well, think about it this way: For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. Right? Because God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. It's used interchangeably. It, it means the same thing. You're just not understanding modern English. Okay, so eight souls were saved by water. That's verse twenty. Mm -hmm. And it's the light figure. The anti-type, the light figure, were unto, I mean, were unto even baptism, doth 
also now save us. Baptism does now save us. That's what he says. He says the like figure want to even baptism does now also save us. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the like figure of baptism is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is the like figure. The Romans 1.16 is very clear. It says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Would you? So, it's the gospel that is the power of God on his salvation. Okay. Water baptism is not part of the gospel. Hey, John makes Paul makes it very clear. Tony, I got I got kicked out for whatever reason. So, I don't know what you said the last ten seconds. What'd you say? I said in Romans one sixteen. It says in in Romans one sixteen. It tells you that the gospel is the power of God on his salvation to everyone. It says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And okay. Corinthians, I believe that. Yes. I believe the gospel. Right. Well, then in 1 Corinthians 1.17, it says, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, clearly showing the distinction between water baptism and the gospel. It's not, water okay. baptism does not save. Let's, only the gospel. Let's discuss this, okay? So... When you when you go to the book of Romans one sixteen, were the Romans already Christians? Just a second, I was talking to my daughter. What was the question? I said, like the epistle letters, like the book of Romans, was it already written to Christians? Yeah, I don't play that game because there's people obviously in Rome that would have been saved and not saved. So who am I to say who was saved and who wasn't saved? And when, it, when we're reading the book of Romans right now, it's written for everybody. It's not like it's not like it's just for the Romans at that time. Do you think that the the, the book of Romans only applies to the people in Rome or the world? The the letter was written to a a group of people. A direct group of people we can make application from it but there were certain problems and certain things that these individuals were having that we like may not us. necessarily have yeah just like all of us all right for example so for example do you know people that that live next to you that are trying to keep the law of Moses yeah absolutely I know a lot of tour observers Okay, well, well, I don't have any people around here in Tennessee that are doing that. Okay, well, I mean, like, you don't have Seventh-day Adventists in Tennessee? Not where I live, no. Oh, wow. You don't have Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, Jews, none of those in Tennessee? Uh, well, where I live, no, there's no Jews. There's no, there's no people. Like, I'm talking about people that I run into that actually, like, I engage with. Who say that they're actually practicing Jews and Jehovah Witnesses? So you said Torah. So we're talking law. about Torah observers, law keepers, right? Yeah, that are trusting right. in their, that are trusting and keeping the law for salvation. That's like almost every single denomination. You're doing that by thinking that water baptism saves you, because it's okay. a by God. You, what, you have to do it to be saved. That's what that's what you say. See, see, people can say a lot of things, but you actually don't have any proof you saying that i'm trying to keep the law of moses because i'm teaching water baptism is really ignorant because in the law of moses they didn't water baptize for the remission of sins in the name of jesus christ so it so shows that actually that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that you're pointing to something that's instructed us to, instructed for us to do by the law as in something that we have to do in order for salvation if you well, think you the law, so you're, you're referring to the law is the law of moses so again show me no, I'm law. referring to the law as all of God's law, not just uh, in the Old Testament, also the New Testament. So believing wasn't in the law of Moses? They didn't have to believe in God? They absolutely had to believe. So you're teaching works. You're teaching a law. Works, uh, believing isn't a work. Oh, really? Have you read in John 6, 28 and 29? Yeah, it says the work of God, not our, not the work of us. So you, you, don't even, you don't even read your Bible. John 6, okay. 29, it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God hey, hey. that you believe on him will be a sin. Not hey. how works. Hey, Tony, you said I, I don't read my Bible, but you're the one going around saying you're a Baptist, and I say I'm a Christian. Yeah, I you, can just, you. you just 
straight up misquoted John 6.29. It's the work of God, not our works. Are you Calvinist now? That's absurd. <laughs> well, so you're going to like, go an, an hominem attack because you misunderstood John chapter 6, verse 29. It says, what then said they unto him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Yeah. So and the works answer. of God and the works of righteousness are all in the same thing. It's no. doing what God has prescribed. To get saved? Do you think that you have to do the law in order to get saved? What keep do you see about doing the law? Do you think you have to keep the law to get saved? What law are you talking about? Are you talking about the law of Moses or the law of Christ or the law of faith? All of God's law. Do you think you have to do any of God's law in order to be saved? You have to follow the law of Christ to be saved. Yes. See, exactly. You're, you're teaching a works-based salvation. That's false. It's a wicked, damnable heresy. So, so are you teaching a dead faith salvation? No, I'm teaching that all you have to do is believe in order to be saved. The God yeah, that's the power of James, James says that's a dead faith salvation. So you're teaching no, a dead you're faith. misunderstanding James too as well. So you're, oh, yeah. you're, so, so you're, you're telling me Baptist. You say you're a Baptist. There's no Baptist in the Bible, and you know all of this, and you you yeah, want to read. Who's all James writing to? Who, who is James all writing to? You went to the whole Romans thing. Who is he writing to? The so he went and read all of the conversion account of the Philippian jailer. He left out baptism because he's a Baptist. He's trying to twist the scriptures. That's what Baptists do. And 1 Peter 3.21 is so clear. The like figure were unto now even baptism now saves us. Baptism saves. So again, that's what you get with some individuals like this. He wasn't interested in debating. Yeah, he is pretty ignorant. Hey, you ha you had a question? I seen your comments. How you doing? Yeah, are you are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I hear you good. All right. So, hey, look, <clears throat> I believe in. I believe there's four steps, right? to salvation. Jesus talked about them consistently through his teachings, right? And there is a difference between a lot of, I think a lot of people that from different denominations, right? Regardless of what denomination they may be, um, they get wrapped up on specifically just Paul, right? Hey, let me ask and you so, this though. Look, and I'll so, let you talk here. I'll let you talk here in a second, but see, I, I'm against all denominations. I believe all denominations are wrong. Yeah, I, yeah, I got that. I heard you right. But there's okay. four there's okay. four steps to salvation, right? There's belief, right? And belief you can trust uh, you can chalk up to trust, faith, right? Wrap it off on the one, right? Then there's repentance, right? Repentance is spoken about through the entire book of book of uh, of the Bible, right? Old and New Testament to include Christ. Yeah. There is baptism, water baptism, and there is also receiving the Holy Spirit. The thing that most people forget about is Christ commanded his disciples, the very last chapter in Matthew, before he was ascended into heaven, the last thing that he said to them was, go and teach all nations what I have taught, taught you, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, that doesn't mean Catholic, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It means his name, right? Baptism, yes. Greek. Latin and Hebrew all mean the same thing, to immerse in water, to wash with water, not sprinkle, but to actually immerse, right? All three of them mean the same thing. So Christ commanded his, his disciples to do this, this very thing that he himself set as an example to do after his resurrection. Baptism is the regeneration, Paul says, of one's soul, the renewing of yourself. And when you look up what the word regeneration means, right? in Greek, in Latin, and in Hebrew. I use all three, right? I use Strong's Concordance. So a lot of people get that. A lot of people forget about this. Yet Paul was baptized himself by Ananias on the road to Damascus when he got to Damascus, as he was told to, right? Go meet with Ananias. And, yeah. and the angel of the Lord told Ananias what to tell Paul and what to do to Paul. 
And a lot of people like to say, well, Paul says, I didn't come to preach baptism. No, he didn't. He came to preach the further word of God of the gospel of keeping faith, believing. All his letters, and a lot of people miss this, are not to sinners. They're to people that already believe. They're to people that have already been saved. They've already been baptized. They've already got the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Call it what you want. They're already in church. His gospel is, is furthering the, uh, the Christ gospel. And it's to continue to tell them how to live, not to this is what salvation is. And Paul baptized individuals. Now, he didn't preach baptism, but he did preach repentance. And he did preach about faith. And he did teach about all these other things. And those are all in scripture. So a lot of people get this misunderstanding. What's your question? There was no question. It was, I wanted to say this while Tony was on the line, because he keeps saying that water, water baptism wasn't there. So that's all I was like, hey, let me let me say this, let me say this, right? So it was a command.